No. Samantha will help you. Ah, oh, we are live. How's everybody doing? And I want to tell you guys, even though we're live right now and everybody's watching, there's a seven second delay on this. Yep. Don't watch the screen. <laughs> Read the comments. So, uh, welcome to ATS Live, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Gehring. I'm the Vice President of Recruiting here. Uh, we've been doing this uh, consecutively since March. Uh, and so uh, we call this ATS Live Ask Us Anything for the simple reason. We, the, the platform of this is 100% for new drivers that are kicking tires, thinking about uh, making a job change, and is ATS going to be the right company for them? So uh, we try to be extremely transparent. Uh, we are completely unscripted. Uh, Any time we've tried to script, uh, it never goes the right way. So again, uh, welcome. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, I always want to call out thank you to our ATS drivers that a lot of you guys join, uh, join join us every Wednesday night for this. Really awesome to be able to have you guys kind of reinforce and add some comments as far as your experiences with us. Uh, Chad, uh, love to see you back again. I appreciate that. So I want to start out really quick by introducing Blake. Uh, Blake is a fleet manager in our Flatbed Specialized Division for our contractors. Uh, and so tonight we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about really two subjects. Um, Anderson Trucking, we've got a thing that we call the three-legged stool. Uh, and, and I bring this up a lot because I just want folks to know that this is all we think about. So we pay attention to three things. Are we getting our drivers the pay that they deserve? Uh, and the paycheck is an absolute no-brainer. You're not, you're not going to work for to drive make less money. So we keep our eye on pay. Number two thing that we do is when a driver asks for home time, that we'd never fail on their home time requests. And number three, simply treating our drivers with respect. And so... Uh, today, with Blake joining us, and Blake, if I'm not mistaken, you've been with us for about two years. Yep, okay. I've been here, yeah, pretty, almost exactly two years now. Good, good. So welcome aboard. I do <clears throat> want to say that Blake is a master sergeant getting ready to retire uh, in the service here, and I just want to thank you personally for your service. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so really quick today, we're going to talk a little bit about home time, uh, really dig into that. But whenever I have the opportunity of having a fleet manager on board with us, uh, one of my biggest goals is to be able to also talk about what is that what is that special ingredient of what makes a good fleet manager? What are those key things that the fleet manager does to really start building that trust uh, and respect level between the fleet manager and their new driver, and then keeping that driver from new to that tenured five, ten, twenty year uh, year driver? Uh, there's a number of key things to that, right? Right. Oh, absolutely. So, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to get caught up real quick. Uh, Juan, thanks for joining us. Uh, Mao, always love seeing you on board here. I, I followed behind on a couple of comments here already, but uh, really appreciate you guys always calling out. We got uh, all that. Who is it? Adelaida. Adelaida, yeah, down down in Louisville, Kentucky. So we just signed up for the Matt's show. So we are going to be down at the Matt's truck show this year, finally in Louisville. I'm glad to finally see that that's coming back. Um, so, uh, oh, Nick, good to see you on board as well. Uh, if I missed anybody, we're going to catch up. Let me say something really quick. Uh, important for me to tell you, we do not miss comments. And if we don't get on them live, uh, just because sometimes there's just way too many that are uh, coming through here, uh, we monitor these and we will respond to 100% of the comments. Even if you're watching this recorded uh, after the live event, and you've got comments, we are monitoring that. So if you ask a question uh, or if you've got questions, we're going to respond to those. But but be clear, uh, please challenge me. And when I say challenge me, those questions that you don't think I want to answer, those are the ones I want you to be presenting. So, all right. So was there one out there you wanted me to see real quick, Sam, or are you just um, flopping through there? Let's see. I think someone is joining. Oh, Honestly. Preston's coming on board here too. You're coming on board in December. Good for you. Well, listen, we're going to be here in December no different than we've been here for the last 67 years, so uh, we're not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I, I don't want to be the one talking tonight, Blake. Uh, so I, I'm going to kind of uh, start out by asking that initial first question. Uh, as a fleet manager, you've been with us a couple of years now, and I'm sure there's a learning curve from your first day to the way you do things today. Your success is absolutely measured on your driver's success. 100%. Every, everything is based off the driver. Um, everything we do, it's it, it's driver driven. I if if it's not for the driver, we we don't have a job here and it, it's so the biggest thing for us is just communicating with the driver, being transparent with them, their expectations of what they want from us at ATS and making it clear for them, hey, here's 
how we work at ATS. Here's how we do a business and, you know, make sure it's a good fit. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of vetting in between there, but, um, you know, sometimes personalities are clash a little bit and we got all kinds of fleet managers and we got, so the biggest thing is for us, um, you know, when I started, I had a whole different outlook on what this position was compared to two years later. Right. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun for me because, um, it's, I, I call it cradle to grave, um, with what we do. Uh, we do absolutely everything. So we make sure the pay is getting done. We're making sure you're getting home. We're making sure, you know, anything you need outside of this, you know, we try to make it a family at the right. end of the day. And if we can do that, we can be successful and any of our drivers can be successful doing that at that point. Awesome. And I'm going to say for, for everybody who's watching here, uh, if you're a driver or you're a driver considering us, uh, if, if you've got some specific questions on how we do things within the fleet management side, um, or you've got some stories to share uh, uh, exactly with what's going on, I got to pause a second. Kermit, congratulations, my friend, on your retirement. Uh, I was so sad. I got asked to join you for your retirement dinner, and I was in a meeting off-site that I couldn't get away from. I wanted to meet your family. So sorry, everybody, I got distracted, but uh, Kermit okay. just retired with us. Uh, one of the finest gentlemen I've ever met, and uh, I hope next time you're coming through St. Cloud, you give me a call, and I will absolutely buy you the best dinner you've ever had, way better than what you probably got the other day. So, uh, and Mike, good to see you out there as well. Uh, so, kind of coming back to this again, I'm asking everybody because without the engagement from you guys, uh, it, it really these things are not quite as valuable. So, uh, please, you know, please uh, throw those questions out there, and Samantha, you're gonna. Sam's on the side here. She's always helping me out on the side to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, Nick says, or actually, Chad, uh, Bla uh, Blake, there's places I don't want uh, to go on force dispatch. Don't actually matter how, don't actually matter how would you handle that? So, all right, so you've got, you've got, so with, a, with contractors, just for the record, th there is no such thing as force dispatch, but we are always going to try to help you with making right, good decisions because sometimes drivers limit themselves. Yep. Uh, and part of your job is to make sure that they understand the trade-offs when they say they do or don't want to run certain areas. But so that's a great question. Uh, so for Chad, so Chad, how would that's an easy one really to handle for us? Um, there, there goes the communication. One of the first things we ask, and on the paperwork you fill out before you start, where do you like to go? Where don't you like to go? Um, and we try to stick to it. Now we have uh, on the contractor side, we have three planners. They send out all kinds of loads. That doesn't mean you have to accept it. I mean, if you don't like going to New York City or Pennsylvania or wherever, you don't have to go. And Chad, you're a company driver. And so uh, so Blake is with contractors, but so I'm gonna answer that a little bit because, because Blake has never uh, managed company drivers. But what I will tell you is that, I, I, I hate the word floor, floor sp uh, dispatch, Chad. But I, I believe you've been with us long enough. If there's places you don't want to go that your fleet manager really does want to give you options of, okay, you really don't want to go there. Here are a couple of other options. And if you're saying that you're running into a struggle with that, let me know. But I, I, I can say that I've heard nothing but positive from our company drivers that, yeah, there are times that we have to say, we, we've got to service this load and we're going to do it. But it's not load after load after load. So it's going to happen. Uh, but more times than not, we're hoping that you're going to have some options to where you're going and running the areas that you want to be running. Was there something else I missed? I th saw, thought I saw something up a little bit further, Samantha. Um, yeah, so Nick Jack had commented up here. Let me find her. Do you want me to read it? No, nope, him. Nick just came back with us just a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Um, I could go home two to three times a week if I wanted to. I'm on the new Target Dedicated out of Fridley. My run goes to far going back. I live in Dickinson. And, you know, and that's just a success story. And so, Nick, I think you know you fall, fell into a new dedicated lane, and that was... Frankly, it was dumb luck because I remember you were in orientation and that position just came uh, available. So, uh, but uh, at, at the end of the idea, what is it? Um, just, just know that the more you decline, reject, the less you will make, and you'll still have a truck payment slash fixed expense that you'll need to, to cover. 
Okay, good. And yeah, Chad, I'm glad to see that you say that she does give you options because that's really, really important to us. I, again, we hate the word force dispatch here at ATS. We, it, th there's freight that we have to haul. Uh, but again, we're, we're, we want our drivers to be happy and running the areas that they're most comfortable in. But Blake, like you said in the beginning, th those are the things you handle the day that they're coming through orientation. Yep. Um, and, and the reality is... Uh, so we might end up having a surprise guest today, but I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, <laughs> waiting for the door to get knocked on. Uh, but okay. long, long story short, uh, you know, there's probably times that we, I can tell you, I know for me, but has there ever been a time that you were interviewing a driver in orientation and after you went through expectations and realized that the alignment wasn't there, that we made a decision to say, it's probably best that you don't proceed with Anderson Trucking? I have not yet ran into that. Okay. Um, like I say, the vetting from, you know, our ops managers and um, recruiting and things like that is is amazing. And what we get for drivers that come through on the lease side, like like I said, has been phenomenal. And, you know, when, once you get the expectation up front and then you get to learn how, how people, how drivers work, you know, Hey, this driver likes to drive at night. He likes to run here, here, and here. Um, you know, it, at the end of the day, the communication and building a relationship between the driver and the fleet manager is huge because I, it, it's easy to, at that point, you know, some of the conversations may not be just about this freight or that freight. And also for us, it, it helps if there's great freight and I'm busy, I can put a driver on a load and knowing that they're going to go there and they want to go there. So it, don't force it because right. you call them afterwards and be like, okay, so Lydia, you know, I know you don't mind running here. You know, it's pretty good load. What do you think? And let's go. All right. So, uh, and where are you going? Is there anybody? I want to just make sure. That We're good. We are good. Okay, good deal. And and so, all right, I was waiting. So we have actually a, an additional guest today. And uh, by chance, so Blake is the fleet manager of Lydia, uh, who is a flatbed specialized contractor with us. Uh, do you want to grab that other chair? Or no, I'm good. You're good with standing. Yep. So Lydia, thank you for offering to join us today. Group, My pleasure. You guys know nothing better than I love having when we have drivers in town that spontaneously say, hey, I'll be glad to join you because honestly, it's their stories that matter. Uh, and so, lady, number one, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it, it my pleasure. Means thank a you lot. for having me. So, Blake, on a scale of one to 10, how's he been? Uh, 12. 12. <laughs> Okay, you're not allowed to do that, but okay. I, He's I not going to give you a better load I anyway. Right? It, and, and I know that he has no control over the loads that come across um, from the planners. But on from where I was before ATS to where I'm at now with ATS, um, a lot of that has to do with the relationship that I have with Blake. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit you guys right between the eyes right away. Okay. Okay. So fleet manager wants to have that very cooperative driver that wants to go out and run and make money. Driver wants to have that very cooperative fleet manager that understands everything that you're looking for. So yes. th that's a really big statement. If you had to summarize what you guys truly believe, and I'm going to ask you this question first, Lydia. Okay. As a driver, when you're, when, now that you're, you know, so you, you came to Anderson back in 2020. Yes. Uh, and obviously you've been doing fantastic with us. But when you got assigned your first fleet manager here, uh, and you've worked for another company prior to us. Yes. Can I ask what the one or two most, honestly, most important things to you coming to a brand new company, uh, and now that you've stayed with us for, for a number of years, what, what are those one or two things that are the absolute non-negotiables? Um, micromanagement. I can't stand it. Don't take me by the hand and tell me how to do a job that I already know how to do. Let me run with it and let me show you I know how to do my job. Blake has been amazing with that and home time. I don't ask for it often, but when I do, it's guaranteed in the bag and I'm always there. Okay, that's, that's, that, that's big stuff. That's it is big, big stuff. stuff. And I'm gonna ask one other question. What have you found that surprised you that you like the best about 
how you work with Blake. Are you kidding me? No. There's a lot of things that I love about working with Blake. Well, again, now I'm telling you, like, no matter how much you suck okay. up to Blake, you can't get away with Blake. One of my favorite things about Blake is um, he can call me and he can instantly tell if I'm in a bad mood just by the way that I answer the phone. And before we get off the phone, he finds a way to kind of lessen that that stress that, you know, I've just got a lot of BS going on at home and this and that. And he'll talk to me for a minute, kind of talk me down out of it. And then by the end of the conversation, it's all laughs and all in good fun. And it's like an extension of family there to just kind of get you through the day. You know what I just actually heard you say? Mm-hmm. That you believe that Blake actually cares to you about you and is listening to you. Oh, you know, and he, I, I believe he does. Good. Big deal. Blake, well, how about you? Yeah, uh, you said a little bit earlier, but so I'll use Lydia as an example. Uh, any 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 situations or or examples that the two of you guys can think of that are really memorable that said, "Hey, that was kind of a really important moment for us as far as the trust and 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 respect we have for each other and and the relationship." I remember a couple, but you know the biggest thing was is building that relationship, building the the core of it, and getting to know each other. It's I spend nine, ten hours a day, sometimes more, doing this, working with different drivers. Um, you know, these drivers are out there busting their butts for us, and that's the end. Of, I mean, they work more than I do on this. So it's it's building the respect with them and getting to know them, getting to know a family. You know, sometimes it takes a little while, depending on the driver, to get them to open up a little bit and get them to talk. And, you know, once you get to do that, it's great. Um Lydia talks about home time. Um, out of nowhere, uh, she had a special event she needed to get to in Florida. And it was a non-negotiable. It was, I will get you there no matter what. And you will be there. And she was there. And that's, that's a big thing. Um, keeping your word and, you know, the transparency. And, yeah, if, if you can... Yeah, the transparency and the trust, once you can see that, I, I think that goes the farthest for anything because then you can start building that relationship because if you're not transparent with somebody and you're not um, you're not communicating, you're, you're losing the trust with them. And as long as you, you can build that trust, I, you can go so far because, I mean, you learn how they work. You learn, you know, hey, got kids, so I need to be home a little more. So then it's you're looking are ready for them. You know, you know they they like to be out three to four weeks. So you look to run that one through the house for a 34 yep. and get them to see the kids. So it by learning what your drivers like and who they are and really get to know their family. I mean, because they are family. Listen, that's an important point. You know, it's funny you brought up Florida because the day that we had that conversation and I asked you about going to Florida and you guaranteed me that I could be there, you said something to me that day that has stuck with me, and I've even told my family this multiple times. You told me a happy driver is a productive driver and that you do everything you can to keep us happy. And he's absolutely delivered on that like every single time. But that just stuck with me. Like, and, and it always will. I'll, I'll hey, always, it's valid though, right? I will always respect him for that because, I mean, he's, he's right. If we're, as long as we're happy, then we maintain productivity. And it doesn't matter like, hey, I want to take a 34 in Iowa or, you know, I want to take the weekend off in Southern California, you know, just to get out of the truck for a little bit. I'm not necessarily asking for home time, but I am asking for a little bit of a break. Right. And no matter what, I mean, it, it comes through. It's just that honest, genuine communication. Don't be afraid to ask. So do you know the other drivers under Blake's fleet? Um, there's actually one here that our dogs play together. But other than Oh, that, so you guys are doggy owners. I guess. <laughs> yes. There's one here. Um, I'm not going to say any names, but he's got this really great dog that my dog and his dog have, have been introduced. And, and all that. I don't personally like keep in touch with any of the other drivers the job gets a little bit hectic and you 
you're not the greatest at maintaining outside relationships when you're in constant work mode. No, I get it. Well, listen, I'm going to switch gears a little bit okay. based on what we're talking about right now. Um, so, listen, you're a female flatbed specialized driver. I yes. talked to you a little bit about this outside. I'm saying, what well, you know, why why are so many females scared to do this? Or I shouldn't say scared. What do you think uh, pulls them away from doing this? And, and while you're up here, uh, if, if if you're out there watching this, I, I love what you had to say, but what, what do you think, why do you think you're successful in what you're doing and what do you think you do to remove some of the anxiety? Because we hear the um, story, I just don't think I can do that. Right. And why are they wrong? Um, because you don't know what you're really capable of doing until you actually go out and do it. Um, but I think a lot of it is outside perception. Once you put it out of your head about caring so much about what other people think about you, and you live in your own space and for yourself in your own moments, then you're capable of conquering the world. I mean, it, and it's the honest truth. Um, I'm 42 years old. I'm a grandmother. But I'm out here working circles around some of these 20-something-year-old guys like all day long. Right. Yeah. But it, And it feels good to be able to say that, but it feels even better to know that I've went out on my own to accomplish these goals. Um, it wasn't any form of outside motivation. It wasn't like, oh, well, you'll never be able to do this. It was, hey, you know, this is something that I'm interested in doing. Right. This is something I really want to put forth effort in trying. I know we get sweaty. We get dirty. We get grimy. We get cuts and bumps and bruises and this and that. And none of that, at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. It's like battle scars, you know, like I, I conquered this load, you know. So it's, it's, some of this is challenge. And can I ask a you, lot of the, it is challenge. How's the paychecks been? Oh, well, I'll die here. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't die. I'm not. Here. I'm not gonna retire. <laughs> that, You're not gonna get rid of me. <laughs> like <laughs> when I get when I get too old to pull a flatbed, when I get too old for securement, and I'll, I'll just like switch over to a dry van or something. But you're gonna be with, you're gonna. I'm gonna be with ATS forever. Well, but, and Chad, yeah. I, I'm, you're, I'm not sure if you're making a comment or wondering why I asked that. Uh, you're saying, why does it matter uh, being a female or a male? Uh, it's just a job where flatbeds. 100% agree. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I agree uh, too, Chad. I yeah, do. me too. 100% uh, agree. From a female perspective, I will tell you this. I see a lot more of you guys out there than I do us girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's and that, Valid. that should change. Valid, 100%. That, that really should change. Hey, Sam, how are we doing on comments? Because okay. I'm saying, listen, for a lot of you guys, I'm seeing a lot of great stories as yeah. far as mm -hmm. things that, that you've experienced here. Mm -hmm. I really love that. And for sure, though, if, if there's a question, Sam, I'm counting on you to make sure you call that out because I don't, I do not want to miss a single one. Come on. So, um, so you know, let, let's just say you had five minutes left, right? And mm -hmm. you're running in and you're asked the question, uh, what is it that you would want for sure you would want a new driver that's considering coming to ATS to know. And I'm gonna ask you this one again, Lydia. What what defines a successful driver at ATS and what defines a driver that will not be successful here in your opinion? I don't honestly think that anybody that's willing to put forth the work couldn't be successful here. Um, I've, I looked into a lot of places whenever I was looking to move companies. Um, but just everything that was presented to me. We have a saying out in the field, if a recruiter's mouth is moving, they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. it, it's a real saying. Um, we hear that a lot. If a recruiter's mouth is moving, they're lying to you. Um, Holly did not even give me any impression that she was sending me any type of falsehood whatsoever. And oh, so Holly was your recruiter? Holly was my recruiter. Yeah, isn't she awesome. the best? She yep. is so awesome. And I've sent a lot, I've sent quite a few people her way. Good. Um, I, I live, breathe, eat, and sleep ATS. Anybody asks me, the, I have random people at truck stops, hey, how do you like working for them? Love it. Here, let me get your information. Send it over to Holly. And give her, she'll give you a call. You know, no problem. Um, I love that. Thank I've you. Even, I've <laughs> even recruited one that, that Blake took on. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great guy, super sweet guy. Never flatbedded before, but he jumped in it and rolled up his sleeves, and he was just on it. Like, um, but if you're not willing to put in the work, if you're not willing to put in the effort, if you're not willing to maintain your own responsibilities, then maybe you shouldn't think about branching off and, and doing this on your own. Right. Well, and, and so, and a couple. I made a couple of notes here. So, 
talking about talking about home time, uh, Blake, you and I talked about it was really quick about covering you know cost of freight and and freight lanes, family emergencies. Mm-hmm. We've, we've kind of brushed on a couple of those, um, and and again having you know having Lydia here with that, with you. Uh, what would you say that if you're just going to kind of wrap off of saying, listen, home time is not just about one thing. It's obviously communication is crystal clear. And as far as in advance, you can do it. But what are some of those other variables when it comes to home time? Because I'm guessing, I'm guessing if maybe Lydia is talking about going home at a particular time and you've got rates coming in that are double what they would normally be, you, you make sure that the driver knows, hey, yeah, absolutely, we get through the house. But are, I want you to know freight is about as hot as it's ever been right now. Uh, and so if you're willing to stay out a little bit longer, it, it might really be worth your time. And, and, and with me asking him that, um, have, have you follow up with that is, do you ever feel pressured even if you say, no, I want to get through the house? I don't feel pressured at all. Okay. With, with Blake, I don't ever feel pressured into doing anything that I'm not comfortable doing. Every now and then I will step out of my, uh, I'll step out of my comfort zone. And then I get that, I can't believe you really took that load call. <laughs> And, and that's when I remind Blake, well, sometimes you have to do things <laughs> to remind yourself why you don't do these things. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, I've never been pressured to a point of, well, if I, if I still say no, then, you know, how is that going to affect our working relationship? That's never been an issue. Well, and I'm, we've, got, we've got three minutes left, and I'm going to tell you something. I've got, a, I've got a gift for the one person that sends a question in specifically for Blake that you think he absolutely does not want to answer. Uh, and I'm only giving you three minutes. It's 727, and we do these things only for 30 minutes on, on Wednesdays. Uh, so three minutes for a really, really, really good one to get out there. Um, so we got three minutes left, you guys. Again, talking to the audience, what final words would you say? So I just asked you the, you know, I just asked you the question. I'm going to ask you, Blake. Um, the, the drivers that you think are going to be successful. Oh, no, let's say you've got a driver calling and they say, just tell me, tell me the biggest thing that you think I need to know about ATS and how you're going to manage me as a fleet manager. What, what do you think the two most important things are? We talked, you kind of brushed on it earlier, but we talked about so much. I really want to make sure that everybody watching has a takeaway on what the top one or two absolute most important things are. And I'm going to ask you that same question, Lydia. So for me, I would, like I said, it's a lot of transparency and just building the trust. Um, One thing that I will say up and down, and it's family first with ATS. Um, I've never, ever been with a company that has put family first so much. Um, It's it's absolutely amazing. I've, I've seen so much help, um, you know, from, you know, we have the foundation that helps out in times of need and we, you know, it's there, that's what it's for. And I've never, I've never seen anything like that. And it's it's absolutely amazing. And that helps build that trust too. Absolutely. And, you know, when we talk home times and things like that, I mean, the Andersons, they, I mean, they push for it at Christmas time. We push for home time for Christmas. You know, we make sure our drivers are where they're supposed to be, yep. when they want to be. Um, you know, that, that that's how we build our trust. And, you know, loads, I mean, we, we do a lot of work on looking for loads for our drivers, things like that, learning the freight lanes, you know, um, Freight, yeah, sometimes we might tell you, hey, this is a little cheap. You might not like it, but on the back end, you will see something much better coming out of there. So it's, and that's the trust. That's the trust you build. You know, part of what I just heard you say, actually, and and again, Lydia, this would be good for you to know that it sounds like you're making sure that your drivers never go into the future, not sure what's going to happen when I get there. You're almost almost already saying, so once you finish this load, what direction we're we going so that planning is a little bit, you know, almost proactively oh, yeah. done. Oh, most definitely. Um, it's, it's, it's not an uncommon occurrence for me to be booked a week, week and a half out even. That's awesome. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon. It's not, and it's nice to know, 
hey, when I drop here Monday, then I'm going here, and then I've got to be there Wednesday, and then, then I'm going to go, you know, 20 miles down the road, pick up another one to drop off Friday, and then I've already got my weekend load set up. Like, it's it's not uncommon at all. So so you said that you referred a lot of drivers. I have so referred a lot. You're looking at the camera right now, okay. and the one thing... The final, the final words that you would, would, would want to make sure a driver just knows about what it's like to drive here at ATS. What, what's that one thing that you, you'd there, want to stress? There's not just one thing. It's everything, which I guess you could sum up as one thing, but it's, it's everything. It has literally been everything. I, have, I feel like I've not met a stranger here. Even people that I've never laid eyes on, the mechanics in the shop, the guys in the body shop. Um, I've never met Holly face to face, but I've. Are you here tomorrow? I would hug her. Are you, are you I'm here not, tomorrow? I'm not pre planned. So. Uh -huh. but that's, that's, no. ah. Well, I just got my truck back out of the body shop. I've got <laughs> so do me a favor. Come over to the office tomorrow. Let's say, tell safety to tell me when you're there. And okay. I'll personally give you a tour and walk you right to Holly's desk. See in the what I mean? Yeah. Like family treatment. For, for real. No, you she didn't want to meet you. You don't you don't meet a stranger. You don't meet a stranger here. Everybody is so open and welcoming and warm to you from day one. That first phone call from the recruiter and every day after that has just been an amazing my dog is even welcomed everywhere I go. Like everybody <laughs> even loves my dog and he's a rambunctious I have a boxer. Of course he's Ram Bunks. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, like it's just, it's everything all in one. Um, home time, the pay, the willingness to work, the requested time off, the, it, I mean, it's, it's all of it. All of it. It's been great. Yeah. I, I, and Lydia, I, I just can't thank you enough for joining us tonight. And you guys, we, we don't try to have a hard stop. But I just want to be real clear on that. Are, are we still up there, yep. Samantha? Yep. Um, and by the way, Nick, uh, I'm going to guarantee you that Blake's got an answer for that, and I've got an answer considering we're, we're both Army. Uh, so I have no idea what, it's, what, the, what the Marine Corps does in a shower together. Uh, I can tell you we don't have that problem in the Army, do we? No, no, so. no. Um, Preston, you're saying describe the expectations of you as a fleet manager and how that helps build respect between the, uh, between the fleet manager and the driver. So... In your own words, one of the drivers was asking, describe, describe the expectations of you as a fleet manager and how that helps build the respect between the fleet manager and the driver. My biggest thing, um, and I tell everybody straight up front, if you're going to be late for something, let me know beforehand. If there's an issue, just call me. Because if I can get ahead of everything, it's, things go much, much smoother. And at that point, you just start building that that trust because you, um, yeah, you, you know that, hey, listen, um, you know, this is going on, this is going on, and this is going on. This is what we need to do. So you build the trust from that, and, and it only goes from there. And to me, them are, that's the first steps of building that trust is just being open and honest. Um, Hey, I've had drivers called, hey, I screwed up. I slept till 10 o'clock today. I slept right through my alarm. I'm sorry. Okay. Let, that, that's all I needed to know. But you Thank know what? You. Like, that's the perfect example because trust and respect do go both ways. I, I, I just got to call that out. Uh, the expectations are high for you as a fleet manager, but what you just said, uh, if you make a mistake, I'm guessing, hey, that load I just offered you yesterday, Lydia, Guess what? I didn't move fast enough, and it just got dispatched to another driver. It happens. But it happens, right? It happens. And 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 just being upfront, transparent, and and frankly, a sense of urgency to say I just made a mistake, and then try to fix it, because then he just needs to find you two more loads like that back to back, right? <laughs> right. No. <laughs> He's no. got to make up for it. <laughs> well, well, you guys, th this was actually really enjoyable for me. I, I just th this is at the heart of what Anderson Trucking Service is. It, it's our it's our drivers. And it's the support behind our drivers to get this here. Again, you guys, I'm, I'm the old fart. I've been, I, I've got tattoos of Anderson trucking uh, everywhere because I agree. I, I, I will, I will, well, I don't want to die here, but I'm going to. I don't want to retire. I'm not working for anybody else. I don't uh, want to retire. Sure. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to retire. I don't want to go anywhere. I mean. With the money that you told me you were making earlier? It wouldn't you, be that unfeasible. So, no. Am I missing anything but, else before uh, I start yeah. wrapping up? Yeah, so. Oh. That's a good question. I guess, Blake, would you ever trade places with a driver and do their job? Curiosity. 
Oh, that's a that's a hey, that's a good question. Would you ever do that? Um, <laughs> ten years ago, yes, I would have. Um, now there's no way I could. <laughs> My body's broken enough that there's I couldn't, mm -hmm. and. I have more respect for what they do, what you guys do out there than you can ever imagine. Hey, the one from Tina, can I answer that yeah. one? Um, Go ahead, read, read it out loud, though. Yeah, it, has there ever been a question from a driver you couldn't give an answer to, and how did you address the question? I can answer that one okay. as a driver because I've asked that question, those questions of, I don't really have an answer for that right now, but um, after maybe, I mean, just a little bit of research, I always get a call back with awesome answers and, and awesome resolutions. Um, but I've, I've been that driver with those questions. So, so if I understand it, Tina, are you asking, has there ever been a question that you couldn't get an answer for? And if that's the right question, are you basically saying, Lydia, that even if they couldn't answer it, that you always got a call back afterwards and yes. get an answer? Yes. Okay. No, that's fair. Yes. Well, and I'm, I'm hoping that that's what uh, you're but, asking, Tina. Great question. Right. Um, it is a great question, but I can honestly say, you know, to back that up, I didn't get some BS line of, well, it could be this or it could be that. It was a flat out honest, I don't really know how to answer that question right now. Let me get back with you. Well, what did we just do outside when you asked me, why can't I get through more miles an hour on my government? Right? I don't have an answer for that right now, but I will get back with you. <laughs> I, I, I actually said we're pushing on it pretty hard, but uh, no, listen, but, but our rule of 65. Listen, we yep. talked about that earlier. Our, our governance speed is 65. It, it is what it is. But uh, so, and th thanks. I, I'm really glad to hear that that was it. So folks, we're about 10 minutes over. Uh, again, I cannot thank both of you for being here but i was i feel blessed that, that you were here today lydia and Thank i'm saying you. holly would love to beat you tomorrow i would love to meet holly good uh folks uh, i'm going to go ahead and sign off but again for all of our active drivers that joined thank you so much for joining so, the, so many of the comments that you're throwing out there for the drivers that are considering ats uh i'm sure that's really helpful for them uh it, and, and I, obviously we've got a couple of drivers that are going to be joining us soon uh i hope this is helpful uh i can't i beg for this every week uh, please tell us what you'd like us to talk about. Uh, give us the agendas of the things that you'd really like to be hearing about on this because if we're not talking about what you guys are wanting to talk about, uh, this is really almost useless. So uh, none of us are sitting here at 7.45 at night because uh, we've got nothing better to do. Uh, so uh, thanks again. Uh, so basically, yep, you guys can wave goodbye. Thank but you. From ATS, uh, ask us anything. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m., same time. Take care, everyone.